recap for today's show. Of course, the NFL playoffs are in the second round, and、uh, we don't talk about、uh, pro leagues on this show, unfortunately. Even even though I personally do watch you know, these leagues, and、uh, I, I did watch last weekend's、uh, first round action, definitely very exciting. But、uh, we will leave、um, the、uh, professional sports talk to、uh, after the show when I hang out with my buddies at the pub. Anyway,、um, getting to SFU hockey,、uh, the clan last played their. Last played on December the sixth、uh, in a four nothing victory over Eastern Washington University.、Uh, that was the last game、uh, for the Simon Fraser University clan prior to the. Christmas break. So、uh, now that the Christmas and New Year's break is over, the clan is back in action tonight at the Bill Copeland Sports Center in Burnaby, facing the University of Victoria. And I did manage to catch up with Steve Chong again. He covers the SFU men's hockey team on a regular basis, and、uh, we did a little、um, interview. Or I did a little interview with him for this program. Let's take a listen. So we're pleased today to have Steve Chong, who has his own、uh, Jump Lash show right here on CJSF, in the studio with us today to talk about the SFU men's hockey team for a little bit. Now, thanks for coming on today, Steve. How are you? Tired today. I've spent mostly. I have spent time commenting on a blog and a message board, and the New Year's I was out all morning. Oh wow! It's.、Um Well, glad that you're here. Anyway, really appreciate it. And、uh, you must tell us、uh, the listeners about、uh, your blog posts、uh, sometime. But、uh, for today, we're just going to talk about hockey. So,、um, yeah. And、uh, actually, since we are on, you're on here today. We might as well give your show some publicity. Now, I, you do a jambalaya show,、uh, and you mix in some sports in there as well. I understand.、Um, when can listeners catch your program on CJSF? You can catch me on Saturdays between ten and noon most weekends. Between ten and eleven, I host Hit Parade, where I count down the top thirty albums in the Burnaby Mountain each week. And between eleven and noon, you can listen to my Jambalaya, featuring independent artists and a commentary on the SFU athletics, and sometimes on Metro Vancouver issues. Fantastic! So it sounds like、uh, you're very busy, Steve,、uh, talking about、uh, sports, music, and also social issues. So really appreciate you coming on today. Now, getting into our discussion about the SFU men's hockey team. Now, I understand、uh, you cover them on your show as well. So, though, for the casual sports fan who loves hockey but doesn't know anything about the men's hockey team at SFU. Uh, what can you tell us about about this team? I understand they're in second place. What would you also tell the casual sports fan? Well, SFU hockey has been one of the best programs in the British Columbia Intercollegiate Hockey League. The clan has been among the top teams in the last few years. This year's edition is in second right now, only four points behind Trinity Western and Langley. And、uh, last year they they. Did they lose in the finals last year, or well, what happened last year? They got knocked out in the first round, I、oh, believe, okay. Okay. by Trinity Western. All right, but still very competitive this year.、Uh, second place、uh, in, the, in the league. Now I understand that、uh, Nick Sandor,、um, who is one of the assistant captains, is leading the league in scoring, or leading the team in scoring, I should say, with eighteen points in eleven games. What can you tell us about Nick's、uh, play this season? Well, Nick is a great playmaker and CCI is extremely well. Nick tallied two helpers as he assisted on Adam Caligari and Jonah CC goals, as the clan blank Eastern Washington four nothing back on December six. And Sandor has eighteen points, thirteen of them assists. Wow! So definitely a playmaker for sure. And、uh, I understand you're also high on jo-、uh, Jono Sisi.、Uh, Sisi. Oh, Sisi. Okay, he's a forward who is only five ten, but he plays big.、Um, thoughts on him, and why you think he's a great player for SFU? First of all, Sisi is listed at five ten, but is actually smaller. Okay. <laughs> In terms of height, anyway, but he plays very big for、mm-hmm. his size. Well, he catapulted to second in all-time BCIHL scoring. Earlier this year, the clan struggled when he was out for a month earlier in the season. But after CC returned on November fifteenth, SFU has won four of last five. Okay, so it sounds like he's、uh, really a, a, an impact player for SFU. And yeah, you, you know how the media guides and like the websites always list heights. 
and weights, but you know sometimes they're not accurate. <laughs> when you come across face to face with with some of the players, you can see that uh, their actual height is not the same as what's listed. But anyway, it's good to know that uh, CC has uh, you know has made a great impact on the SFU team. Now, Steve, your thoughts on Andrew Perrant, the six foot two goalie? It seems that SFU wins whenever Perrant's in goal. Uh, six wins and two losses on the season. Well, Andrew has been the backbone of the clan has rescued his teammates on countless occasions when especially when clan was protecting a lead or is tied with their opponents and I understand you mentioned as well um, or off the air um, you, you told me this earlier but uh, the team needs to uh, be more consistent on the road and you know win road games to have more success um, what else needs to happen for the SFU team to you know to be able to win the championship in the league this season well, the clan's defense must clamp down defensively in the third. In the two November games, SFU were either badly outshot or squandered leads. On November 15th, against Selkirk, the 2014 champs, the clan allowed 13 shots while nursing a 1-0 lead. Prompt was the main reason why they squeaked out a 1-0 win. On November 29th, the clan traded goals with Trinity in the third, squandering a 3-2 lead they built in the first 40 minutes. SFU eventually won the game in the shootout, but relying on shootout to win games is a bad idea. Last game against Eastern Washington, the worst team in the BCIHL, they didn't have that kind of a problem, squandering leads or being badly outshot, but Eastern Washington was playing with half the roster missing or a lot of their good players missing. Well, you made a couple of great points there, Steve. Um, especially the point where you're, you're saying that uh, if you're having a one-goal lead going to the third period, you want to clamp down defensively and not give up like 13 shots on goal, and re- have to rely on your goaltender to bail you out. So that's definitely a key point. And also, yeah, you definitely if you have a lead going to the third period, you want to be able to hang on and uh, not have to go and you know to have it go to a shootout when anything can happen. Um, yeah, because I, I think we were hanging out the other day when. Uh, uh, the NHL Islanders, they had like a 3 nothing lead and they went on to uh, allow Buffalo to tie the game and then eventually lost in a shootout. So things can happen, bad things can happen if you uh, let your goaltender have to try and bail you out consistently. Now, talking about yourself now, Steve, let's focus on you. I understand, Steve, you've done some play-by-play uh, for the SFU men's team before. What, what was it like? You know, were, were you nervous? Was it like a dream come true to do play-by-play for a hockey game? Uh, tell us more. Well, first of all, doing play-by-play, well, being a, becoming a play-by-play man on November 15th as SFU hosted Selkirk was a dream come true. But at the end of the night, I realized I'm better off doing either color commentary or host. The fact that, if my memory recalls correct, neither team actually had names on the back. Uh, I see. <laughs> so that's one issue. And also... Um I guess you have to really know the roster well, like um, you know, looking at the numbers and having to figure out who who is number what and um, and that kind yeah. of stuff. So that can be tricky. And what about uh, the puck? Like, how easy was it to follow the puck when you're doing the broadcast, or is it a difficult thing to to keep track of? Puck was pretty easy to find because we are at the top. We are at the we are just well, we are at the center ice area but way up above in the stands. So we were able to see pretty good the ice surface. Okay. Well, uh, again, congratulations on uh, having the opportunity to do play-by-play for hockey game uh, recently in November. Great stuff. Now, getting back to the SFU men's team, uh, how can the casual sports fan listening today stay in touch with this team and uh, see how they're doing? Well, go to the SFU Hockey website, BCIHO website, and if you want to listen to the home games, tune into Evolution 1079. Evolution 1079, stream on .fm. All right, and uh, also you talk about the team, obviously, as well on your show, um, right, as well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now, thanks, Steve, for coming in. Uh, we'll look forward to listening to your updates on the team as well and your show. Thanks again for coming in, and um, you know, good luck with your uh, broadcasting career. Thank you. So thanks to Steve Chong for coming on to the program and um, you know sharing his thoughts about the SFU men's hockey team. Now obviously, as you can tell, we recorded 
this uh, little the banter a uh, couple of days after New Year's. So Steve mentioned, of course, uh, he was you know he was out um, you know partying uh, all night for New Year's uh, New Year's Day, and uh, we just did an interview um, uh, on the third, so a couple of days after that. So again, um, you, you know, really appreciative of uh, Steve Chong coming in to uh, uh, do this um, you know this update. Uh, on the SFU men's hockey team um, uh, with me on, on, the, on the show. And just to uh, remind you, you can also catch Steve Chong's programs here on CJSF Saturdays from uh, 10 to noon. Uh, he plays music as well as talk about sports and uh, other social issues uh, in the world. So, um, you know, he, he's, he's on, you know, just a couple hours after uh, the show. So uh, stay tuned uh, for that later today. Now, getting back to the SFU men's hockey team, um, as mentioned earlier, Simon Fraser is in second place right now. They've played 14 games um, so far this season, and they do play just a 24-game schedule, so only 10 remaining games uh, for the clan. And right now they have a record of eight victories, six losses, and no ties. Uh, so 16 points and uh, 14 games, and as Steve mentioned in the clip, uh, four points out of first place. So definitely uh, the clan is still in contention for a uh, you know, first place finish and uh, who knows what will happen in the playoffs so uh, we'll obviously if you're interested in catching uh, hockey uh, the uh, men's hockey team of course for SFU you can uh, check them out tonight at 7 o'clock at the Bill Copeland uh, Arena now getting back to uh, other hockey uh, I mentioned early at the top um, of the program that uh, the major midget hockey teams well, primarily in BC, uh, because we cover them on a regular basis. Um, some of those teams were actually invited to participate in a max tournament that was happening in Calgary during the uh, Christmas break. So, for a lot of these uh, hockey players, these again, these are 15 to 17 year old hockey players. Uh, for a lot of them, um, they actually did not get a, a Christmas break or New Year's break, as as we'll talk about momentarily. Because uh, four teams, um, I believe it was the Vancouver Northwest Giants, they were there. Uh, the Greater no, the Vancouver Northeast Chiefs and the. Okanagan Rockets, as well as the Caribou Cougars, these four teams from the BC Major Midget Hockey League uh, were invited to play in the tournament. It was like a 25-team tournament uh, happening in Calgary called the Max Tournament and it included teams from Europe as well as um, the States and then Canada. So <clears throat> definitely like a, you can call it kind of an international uh, tournament or event for 15 to 17 year old hockey players as they try to uh, um, you know show uh, the world I guess um, you know uh, they, they are among the best in terms of their age group and uh, unfortunately for the Okanagan Rockets who are the defending um, BC Major Midget League champions uh, the Rockets actually lost all four games of their round robin part of the tournament so the Okanagan Rockets did not make it into the um, uh, playoff part of the tournament so that's unfortunate for them and, and again I do have to remind you that uh, the Okanagan Rockets even though they were last year's uh, league champion in the BC Major Midget League um, there was only one returning player from last year's team to this year because um, uh, everybody else has uh, moved on, uh, including um, last year's coach. So they're being coached by a different, um, uh, uh, but they have a different head coach this season, is what I'm just trying to say. And they uh, unfortunately lost all four games in the Max tournament, uh, the round robin part of the event. Now, um, positive news though is that the Vancouver Northwest Giants, um, again, uh, one of the top teams in the league the last few years. Uh, even this year, they are in fourth place right now. Um, actually, they're tied for third place, pardon me. Uh, but uh, the Vancouver Northwest Giants are a strong team again this year. Uh, they had some success in the Max Tournament, as did the Caribou Cougars, who are the top team in the BC Major Major League at the Christmas break. So we'll take a look at uh, the Vancouver Northwest Giants first, because um, they actually had a very successful um, 
round robin part of the tournament because they had a record of three wins and one tie, and that propelled them into a playoff spot. And actually, on December the 31st at 9 a.m. Uh, local time, it was uh, <laughs> 9 in the morning in Calgary, uh, the Giants made it to the semifinals after they defeated the Calgary North Stars four to nothing in the quarterfinals. So this was again uh, New Year's Eve, it had been the morning of obviously, but uh, they won their quarterfinal game to get them into the semifinals. But the semifinals are actually happening or actually happened on the same day because just hours after that on the same day on December thirty first at three PM local time, the Giants then played in the semifinals against the Regina Pat Canadians. And the Giants looked like they were gonna go to the finals because the Giants left one nothing after two periods. Unfortunately the Regina Pat Canadians tied it in the third at one one and then Giants captain Keegan Jones uh, put Vancouver Northwest ahead with eight minutes left. The Can- Canadians tied it with six minutes to go, and then the two teams went into overtime. Uh, there was no scoring in the first overtime period, so it went to a second extra session, and that was where the Regina Pat Canadians got the game winner to knock the Giants out. Uh, so that also put the Regina Pat Canadians into the final. And um, again, all of this you know happened on December the 31st. Uh, so you know, a great tournament for the Vancouver Northwest Giants. Again, they um, went undefeated in the round robin tournament, and then they were about six minutes. Um, away from a berth into the finals but they lost in double overtime in the semifinal and this is like just a one game elimination uh, round so um, good tournament for the Giants but unfortunately they just got uh, eliminated in an overtime game um, in the semifinal uh, well, as for the Caribou Cougars, uh, the top team in the BC Major Midget League at the Christmas break, um, they beat the German Under-17 Nationals by a score of 5-1, to one, also on December 31st at noon local time. That victory put the Cougars into the semifinals, where they outlasted the Calgary Buffaloes 5-4 to four in a game played at 6 p.m. that same day on December 31st. So... It, it nearly could have been uh, like an all BC Major Midget League final between the Giants and the Caribou Cougars, but again, unfortunately, the Giants lost in double overtime in their semi final game. Um, but um, that actually meant a final game between Caribou and the Regina Pat Canadians for the Max Tournament at the Scotiabank Saddam the next day on January the 1st. So, again, <laughs> we're talking about the uh, holidays here, uh, but uh, these 15 to 17 year old players got to spend the Christmas break playing like uh, in the round robin tournament and then they had to play on New Year's Eve and then on well if you if they made it to the finals they played on on uh, New Year's Day January the 1st so anyway getting back to the final between the Caribou Cougars and the Regina Pat Canadians again this is a one game um, el- elimination game uh, with less than two minutes into the game uh, Cougars forward Wesley Shipton uh, scored the first goal and put the Cougars up one nothing. now a few minutes later the Canadians Owen Sillinger answered with a goal to tie the game at 1-1 in the second and third periods both teams actually battled hard but neither team was uh, able to take the lead um, the Canadians actually um, had a lot of shots and even a lot of uh, close range chances, but Cougars goalie Griffin Outhouse uh, was able to uh, uh, stop all the shots in the second and third periods. And then in the overtime period, the Canadians had a power play, but they were unable to score, taking the game into a second overtime. So it's like uh, and, you know another sec- another two overtime game, and this time in the final. So it was, again, very exciting. You can bet for uh, these young players, uh, you know, just being part of the action and final game elimination game and they have to go into like two overtimes now with just over a minute into the second overtime period the Cougars chase Dubois capitalized on a puck that bounced off of the boards and he put it into the net and that won uh, the Caribou Cougars the gold medal at the Max Tournament. So congratulations to the Caribou Cougars as they win the 2014 Max Tournament. Again, this is a tournament with like 25 teams uh, from Canada, uh, some teams in the States, and some teams from Europe. And uh, to have actually two teams make it into two BC teams make it into uh, the Final Four, that's really amazing. And it, it very well could have been like um, a final 
game between two BC clubs, but uh, hey, uh, one BC team, the Caribou Cougars, were able to win the whole thing. So congratulations again to the Caribou Cougars, and um, we'll see how they uh, do. You know, the rest of the season in the BC Major Midget League as. Um, the second half of the season gets underway uh, this weekend, so we'll see how they fare. Um, again, one is one to say congratulations to the Vancouver Northwest Giants as well. Even though they did not um, make it a final game, uh, still like an uh, amazing effort for them, just because they were undefeated in the round robin and. They actually made it into like a second overtime in the semifinal, so definitely, uh, perhaps a, a sign of things to come in the second half of the season in the BC Major Midget League uh, when they um, you know, resume play uh, in BC here against the other teams in the league. Now, obviously, uh, because the tournament uh, took place in Calgary, uh, <laughs> I wasn't there, but uh, there, there we do have some we do have some sound bites from. A uh, couple of the players on the Giants side, as the, the Giants TV uh, broadcaster was there to, to do a couple of interviews, and uh, we can take a listen here as uh, they they talked to a couple of players after one of the round robin uh, games. Uh, we spoke with Josh Latta as well as Kyle Kaufman. So we'll take a listen first of all to Josh Latta, number twenty-two of the Vancouver Northwest Giants, as he uh, spoke with Giants TV. Speaking with forward Josh Latta of the Vancouver Northwest Giants after a huge 3-2 win over the CAC Greg Distributors. And uh, Josh, talk us through this hockey game. It was uh, a pretty crazy game to say the least. Uh, very exciting from my eyes upstairs. But uh, from the bench, what were, what were you guys thinking? Uh, your goaltender, David Tenick, definitely standing on his head for sure. Well, yeah, Black Widow, he really bailed us out. Uh, uh, he gave himself that nickname and lived up to it today. He, uh, it was probably the most exciting game I've ever been a part of uh, last uh Last, like, last period was just absolutely phenomenal to be a part of, and I thought from start to finish, there was a, l- a couple times in the second period there that we got rattled, but I think everyone everyone did their part today and uh, stepped up when they needed to, and that's why we won, not because of any individual, just we played well as a team. You talk about players stepping up, uh, including yourself. You score a huge goal there with about 3.18 left in the hockey game. Uh, just a shot from Kaufman right off the goalie, and that finds your stick. You've got a player drenched all over over back of you, and you're still able to finish that. Just talk us through that play and how it developed in your eyes. Uh, well, you know, we got the puck in deep. I think uh, Justin made a good play to get it in off the breakout, and uh, we were battling for it in the corner. Uh, uh, Kyle picked it up, and I went to the net. Made a great shot there. Uh, really smart play. Kyle's a smart player, and uh, just came out to me. Uh, and I just was thinking, get my stick on it, get at the net. Goalie was sliding over, and I got a five hole. I was pretty lucky and happy about that one for sure. It's one of my biggest goals I think I've scored. You look back at uh, goal from Justin Wilson. Uh, highlight reel goal from him and. Uh, did, when you guys were on the bench, or just just watching him, or just being on the ice there with him. What was it like? You see this. You see him just go right one on one with this defenseman. He pulls the toe drag out, and then he goes top shelf. Yeah, um, I gave him the pass, and I was just watching. I was just watching, and I was skating up with him. And then after he made that move around the demon, I just my jaw kind of dropped, and I was just watching it on. And then he made that f- forehand, backhand, forehand, like top shelf move, and that just capped it off. It, what a beautiful, like probably one of the nicest goals I've ever seen live. Like it was ridiculous. So. Like just shows how much skill he has. He's a great player to play with. I enjoy playing with him. No, things aren't going to get any easier here. you got a big tough test tomorrow coming up against yeah. the New York Junior Islanders. Uh, what do you guys have to do to, I guess, build off this when you got two straight here at the Max? Uh, how do you build off this recent uh, success and bring it into tomorrow's game? I think we we did a lot of things right these last two games. We played great on defense with some great goaltending as well, and we know that'll be there for us. So we just got to do our part in front of them. And I don't think anything really changes that what we've done from the last two games. But um, in terms of competing, we need to compete just as hard as we did, no matter who we're playing against. Uh, the Islanders are gonna be a tough test team. They got some good offense, I know, and and uh, so we'll have to be sharp defensively and then capitalize on our opportunities for sure. And it'll be bright and early, so we'll have to. Have to wake up for this one. Appreciate this, Josh, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Perfect. Josh, glad to join us here after a 3-2 victory over the CAC at Greg Distributors.
you heard in the clip there in the interview that um, uh, Josh Latta mentioned guys having to wake up early in the morning to play in these games. Uh, and as mentioned earlier, some of the games start at 9 a.m., so uh, they do have to get up early to uh, to play. And uh, uh, as we saw earlier, or as I mentioned earlier, the semifinal and the quarterfinal, both games taking place on the same day. So it obviously takes a lot out of these players having to play a couple of games in, in a single day. And uh, well-spoken kid, uh, Josh Latta, and uh, he had a, a goal and assist in that particular round-robin game and, uh, you know, in helping the Vancouver Northwest Giants to an undefeated record in the round-robin part of the tournament. And now here is uh, Northwest Giants TV speaking with Kyle Kaufman as well. The Giants forward Kyle Kaufman after a 3-2 victory over the CAC Greg Distributors. And Kyle, uh, talking through this hockey game, it was uh, kind of... Uh, a back and forth kind of game and then you guys just turned things up in the third yeah for sure I mean it was, it was a really competitive game I mean uh, both teams had their chances I know uh, they outshot us quite badly but I mean I thought we were there the whole game uh, had a, a couple of lapses we came uh, hard really strong in the third and came through with a couple big goals sick goal by Justin and then just an unreal goal and then uh, Josh to, to win it with three minutes left was huge for us, so it was just an exciting game, like great to be a part of it. It was a crazy, intense game. You talk about that goal from Josh at the end there with about three minutes left. Uh, you guys are starting to create some pretty good chemistry, you and Josh. Of course, you guys are rooming here on the road in Calgary. Uh, what has it been like just getting to know Josh and uh, creating that chemistry with him out there on the ice as well? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm rooming with Josh. I've, I've known him for a long time. Um, I think uh, for sure the fact that... Uh, we have a good relationship off the ice, and we're buddies. Like it, it helps uh, create chemistry on the ice for sure. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we cl- we we click together, and uh, we hope to continue creating offense for the team. Now you look at that goal, and it was were you thinking pass first, right to Josh, and because you saw him open, or uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, with three minutes left there, I was I was uh, I got the puck on the on the wall. I knew Josh was going to be in the area. I just got it on that. I just threw it hard and low, and uh, luckily enough, bounced out right on his tape. So good on him for burying. It was a big goal for us. You got another tough test tomorrow morning against the New York Junior Islanders. Uh, was, they haven't won a game here yet at the tournament. Uh, very short bench as well. Uh, what do you guys have to do to come out in that hockey game and win that hockey game? Because uh, you guys know that you can have that chance at uh, continuing here at the tournament. Right, right. Like you said, they uh, they haven't won a game. Maybe they're feeling a little down. They uh, uh, third game, they're going to be a little tired with a short bench for sure. We're looking to jump on them early, just get them out of there. Like, uh, put pressure, forecheck, play our game, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll lo- we're lo- see this as a big step. Like, we win this game tomorrow, and we're right there. We're in the playoffs. We're we're in the hunt. So, I mean, yeah, the boys should be ready to go. Appreciate this, Kyle, and uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Perfect, Kyle Kaufman after a big 3-2 win over the CAC Greg Distributors. That was Kyle Kaufman of the Vancouver Northwest Giants speaking to Northwest Giants TV after the round-robin games at the Max Tournament. That's all the time we have on the show. Special thanks to Steve Chong and Northwest Giants TV. And also thanks to you, the listeners, as well for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the interviews and the updates. We'll talk to you again next time. You never know what they're going to say. I just want your lips all up on my face like a cephalopod sometimes suckers itself to a scuba diver's mask. Because they're poets. My grandma got love. Not for this world, though. But hey, my grandma live in any world she want. But you can find out every Saturday night at 9.30 on Shout, Clap, Slam, live from the Vancouver Poetry Slam. We spoil music for everyone. Right here on CJSF 90.1 FM. Are you ready for action, chaos, and mayhem? Well then come on down and support the SFU hockey team. They have a strong lineup this year and are ready to dominate. Games are held at the Bill Copeland Arena and if you're a student, admission is $5. For more information, head over to www. You are listening to CJSF 90.1 FM and CJSF.ca because you are better than most people.
Thank you. Welcome to the Shortwave Report for January 9th, 2015. I'm your host and producer, Dan Roberts. The Shortwave Report is a 30-minute review of news and opinion heard on the Shortwave Radio and the Internet in Northern California. Listening to international broadcast at home is quite easy. You just need a shortwave radio with a schedule of English language broadcast or a computer with an internet connection. To help you with this, I'll announce times, frequencies, and website addresses at the conclusion of each series of stories. At the website for this show, that's www.outfarpress.com, you can find a schedule for dozens of international broadcasters in English. There you can also listen to the past five shortwave.